It's not often that you get to celebrate a sesquicentennial, but that's just what the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency did this fall at its Springfield, Virginia campus. Ladies and gentlemen, and distinguished guests, good morning and welcome. Today we commemorate the 150th anniversary of the United States Notice to Mariners, the nation's second longest running publication. For 150 years, the Notice to Mariners has kept navigators and shipmasters informed with the most current navigational information. The average observer would be forgiven for not knowing the notice even exists. Vessels navigating safely rarely make headlines. Notice to Mariners have neither dramatic moments nor hair-raising adventures. Yet for 150 years, every American ship officer reflecting on a safely completed voyage owes a piece of that to the men and women behind the Notice to Mariners. Before we dive in, first a little bit of history about the Notice to Mariners. Prior to the start of the Civil War, the U.S. Navy numbered 90 ships. By the war's end, that number had grown to 671. More ships, more problems. The Navy published the first notice to Mariners in 1869 as a way to update navigational information in an efficient and effective manner to keep American shipping interests safely afloat. While the mission of the notice, to provide updated information on navigation hazards, has stayed consistent, its parent organizations have changed throughout the past 150 years. Responsibility for production of the notice moved through several different Navy departments before ultimately ending up at NGA predecessor organizations, the Defense Mapping Agency, and the National Imagery and Mapping Agency. Today, NGA's Maritime Safety Office has the responsibility to provide accurate charts and publications, including the notice to mariners, to support safety of navigation. Because we're here to, to celebrate uh, what is our core strength, which is our people and our partnerships. As you look at the history of, of what is notice to mariners and what is the safety of navigation mission, um, you will be struck that, that it relies on partnerships, the people that we have in partnerships, and some of those being partnerships we have with other mariners, um, the Coast Guard, uh, NOAA. Um, so it is a team sport that we're involved in here. Um, at NGA, we say we exist. Our why proposition is to show the way, to get you from point A to point B, either physically and safely, you know, on time, on target, or in the decision process. And we do so as a, a unique agency uh, that has skill sets to know the earth and understand the world. And that know the earth, you know, the physical description uh, and characterization of the earth from seabed to space is something I'm really proud of. So it is pretty special as to who you are and what you provide, and it's a great, great honor that we've hit 150 years um, of doing this service each and every day around the clock, supporting safe navigation around the globe so that things can move from point A to point B. That was NGA Director Vice Admiral Robert Sharp at the 150th anniversary celebration for the Notice to Mariners. To explore the notice a little more in depth, we spoke with two current members of the Maritime Safety Office. My name is Liam. I'm in the Nautical Publications branch. We handle all of the narrative information that accompanies maritime charts as part of the safety and navigation mission. Uh, I'm Mike. I work in the Maritime Safety Office as a maritime analyst, and I write all the notice to mariners that go out to the fleet and commercial vessels for publication and update of the charts. Today, NGA's Maritime Safety Office has the responsibility to provide accurate charts and publications, including the notice to mariners, to support safety of navigation. So just sit right back and you'll hear a tale. A tale of the notice to mariners. No, not for those guys in Seattle, but the one for ships and carriers. This is geo-interesting. How did you both come to work at NGA? Um, I had worked in the maritime industry for about eight years on tall ships, working in a variety of different positions, and finally came to the realization that I wasn't keen on being away from home for about nine months out of the year, so I started looking for shore-based jobs. And this is one of the places where you can have a shore-based career that still uses maritime skills and puts it to work. I really like working for the mariner and providing products that I know how they're being used, and I know they're being used every day. Um, so that's pretty rewarding to me. So it was a good mix of 
a job that allows me to have a life at home and not be away nine months out of the year and you know something that still lets me feel connected to the sea and the people at the sea. So I graduated from SUNY Maritime in uh, 2016 and I graduated. Uh, the job market wasn't the best out there, but I was lucky enough to go out and ship out on my third mate's license. And after shipping out for a little bit, I realized how much I enjoyed being home <laughs> and how much I enjoy the weekends and uh, being around with my family. So I started looking for some shoreside positions that still help the maritime industry, but as well as feeling like I'm in the maritime industry. And when this came, popped up, it felt like a natural fit for me. And knowing now that my current work role directly helps my friends who I graduate school with stay safe at sea, it's pretty fulfilling. So what is a notice to mariner? So basically a notice to mariner is a documentation that we send out to the fleet. We can send it out paper and book or we can send it out electronically. And what that is, it entails information about charts that they need to update. So we get that information from foreign countries where I think it's 60 countries currently send out weekly notices. And we basically take that information and determine what needs to be applied to our charts, such as obstructions, changes in depths, wrecks, rocks, anything you can think of that might go on a chart. We will analyze it, determine whether it applies, and then if it does, we will write a correction saying this needs to go onto our chart, and then send it out in a booklet or electronic or digital version, and the mariner's then job is to put it on their charts. What is the craziest notice that you've ever gotten to add to a notice? So, first of all, I think you'd be amazed at the amount that we don't know about the ocean floor and you know what, what kinds of things happen. Um, and, you know, we're often amazed at the, the things that do happen. So I remember once after some underwater volcanic activity, there was a mud island that suddenly appeared, brand new island. Um, so it had to be charted. We had to write a notice that said, you know, apply island in approximate position. And three weeks or a month or so later, it sank back under the ocean. So then you had to say island no longer exists. Um, so that's one of those things that you don't really think about that happening, but if you're out sailing, you certainly want to know if there's an island out there and make sure that you sail around it. That is crazy. So what does a notice look like? For the first 135 years, um, for the first 135 years, the notice was a printed document. Uh, sometimes it would be a single page. Sometimes it would be multiple pages. Today, or as of the last time that we printed, which was um, December of, tw of 2004, they were multiple pages, sometimes 50 to 100 pages, depending on how much information was in there. At times, they've been double-sided. At times, they've been single-sided because some of the information you used to have to cut out um, with, with scissors and then tape into, either you know tape onto your chart or paste onto your chart or tape into a publication to update the information. Today, that's all digital, so it's a large PDF of information. Um, still can be printed out and cut out and taped into the book, or you can simply follow the, the directions for the chart corrections. For the last 15 years now, we've been almost exclusively digital, uh, so it's a PDF that's issued, and you can go to our website and download that, and it's, re it's released every Saturday. Um, has been every Saturday for a while, uh, since 1886, I believe. Basically, a, a, a document with a series of instructions, <clears throat> some of it having to do with chart corrections, some of it having to do with corrections to publications, some other pertinent information that you may have received over your radio broadcast, and just a, a, a general list of all the corrections that have been made. Um, it has a lot of really valuable information, but it's all sort of wrapped up in a, in, a, in a pretty concise pattern, but it still ends up being a fairly large document that we put out week after week after week. To add on to what Liam was saying about the publications, about the Notice of Mariners publication itself, we also have chartlets in there which play an instrumental role in helping a mariner make a correction quickly. Uh, it's basically like a cut and paste almost of the chart. You basically put it on top of the chart, cut and paste. And that's really instrumental in areas that are affected by natural disasters, hurricanes, things like that. And uh, that really helps a mariner quickly make a change to an area that might have undergone change due to piers falling into the ocean or uh, changes to the hydrography or topography. These charlots really do speed the process up. When you say it's available on our website, can anyone get to it? Or is it just U.S. ships, like people with a .mil address, or is it, is it anyone? It's a completely unclassified website. Uh, everybody from mariners to students currently in school to your pleasure boat yachter, he can go onto the website to get any information because it also has publications on it. 
historical notices, current notices, and plenty of information in between. So they can go on to that to figure out, give themselves information about where they're going, where they're coming from, things they may experience along the way. Why is it still important in the days of GPS and mapping apps to still have the notice? I, I should point out, or we should point out that NGA does have um, and does, does create and distribute digital nautical charts and electronic na navigational charts, uh, which some of our customers are using today, but not all. And so safety and navigation is in everyone's best interest, which is part of the reason why all of our products or the majority of our products are available to, to everyone, not just to specific customer sets. Um, so basically, one of the reasons why charts are a mariner's best friend is that out in the middle of the ocean, things can happen real quickly. You can lose satellite coverage, you can lose your ability to power. Uh, things can happen quickly when you're in the ocean. Having a chart, a paper chart, which doesn't require electricity, it doesn't require anything except dividers and a pencil, you can figure out your exact position on this chart just from using land navigation and land, basically land navigation and celestial navigation as well. So that makes it a huge, huge factor when you're out in the ocean and things can change very quickly. How is it that NGA came to do this mission? The, the Safety of Nav mission and the Notice to Mariner mission dates back to the, the earliest iteration was when in, in 1830 when the U.S. Navy created the Depot of Charts and Instruments. And that mission was to compile and distribute to, to ships uh, charts, navigational publications, and instruments that they would use on their vessels um, for navigating. Over time, that mission has uh, shifted. It's been under a, a several different agencies. Uh, in 1866, they created the U.S. Navy Hydrographic Office. That lasted for a number of years until the 60s when that mission shifted to the Naval Oceanographic Office. Then, that was, uh, then the mission fell under um, DMA, the Defense Mapping Agency, both as a hydrographic center and then there was a hydrographic topographic center. That became NEMA, or was part of NEMA, and then, as you know, NEMA became part of NGA. It's had a number of predecessor agencies, but the mission set and the, the importance of providing safety of navigation information for the U.S. Navy and for other customers as well has sort of always been consistent, even as it's changed and been organized under different agencies and organizations. How do you guys feel contributing to a mission that's celebrating its 150th anniversary? It feels special. I mean, this is something that's been going on a lot longer than I've been on this earth, and hopefully it will continue on a lot longer after I've left. And it feels good to make a contribution to, like I said earlier, I have friends I have friends and brothers and sisters who are out sailing right now on the open oceans, and it feels good to be able to provide information that I know will keep them safe at night, because at the end of the day, no one wants to hear of any bad, horrible tragedies. So knowing that they'll get home safely due directly to what I help make, it's an incredible feeling. I agree. It's, it's very rewarding, and... As a former mariner, I feel very closely tied to the customers um, and having worked a few different aspects of the safety of that mission here, uh, including time at our watch desk, time at our nautical publications, time on, with our notice to mariners. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good feeling to know how your, how your work is being used and to you know, feel closely related to that customer base and to know that the, the mission goes back 150 years um, and, and even earlier, the, the 150 year anniversary is for this specific product, but the mission has been a lot longer than that. Um, is, is, it's rewarding. Thanks for joining the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency for another episode of our podcast, GeoInteresting. Want to check out a notice to mariners for yourself? Head over to nga.mil where my colleague Jessica breaks down what you can find in one. Like what you heard? Join us. Check out all our current NGA career opportunities at intelligencecareers.gov. And this is one case where an intelligence agency actually wants you to spread the word. Tell a friend about GeoInteresting. Look for us on your preferred podcasting platform or on YouTube or read a transcript of the episode at nga.mil. And just because you stuck around for the end, here's a little bonus content from Leanne and Mike. So quick lightning round. What is your favorite mythical sea creature? Can it be a real sea creature? It could be. Oh, what's the shrimp that punches? Oh, yeah. I have no idea. Oh. Uh, I've always liked manatees. I always thought they were fun to look at. <laughs> I think it's a mantis shrimp. Mantis shrimp. I think it's a mantis shrimp. It has uh, some crazy strong punch. That's how it defends itself. And I don't know. I, I think that's impressive. Manatees are pretty good too. What is your favorite nautical themed movie? It's probably weird to say it's with The Hunt for Red October, maybe. I mean, that's Which every, goes that against, should be everyone's uh, favorite. The complete opposite of what uh, 
<laughs> we're taught in school, but uh, probably the hunt for Red October. If I'm being totally honest, it's Captain Ron. Who lives in a pineapple under the sea? It's my brother, Bear Pants. A plus. Uh, do you get seasick? Yes. Yes. You were on a call ship. I, I was. <laughs> <laughs> that seems problematic. <laughs> it is. Um, I can. It's. It's not the best way to spend a day, <laughs> but the. When you get over getting seasick and you're at sea and you, you know, get to experience being at sea, you know, being underway, especially on a sailing vessel for days at a time, it makes it worthwhile. How many of the seven seas have you sailed on? I'll be honest, most of my work was in the Atlantic Ocean, so I've only been to two. I would say most of, most of my sea time is uh, pretty much North America, so I'm going to say three. And do you ever find yourself talking about I find myself talking like a sailor, and you can interpret what that means. <laughs> <clears throat> well, of course, on International Talk Like a Pirate Day, um, obviously, but yeah, I would say uh, talking like a sailor more often than specifically talking like a pirate. Well, that's it. Thank you guys for joining me. That was awesome. Thanks for having us. Thank yeah. you.